Welcome to the second part of the snapping tutorial. We finished the first part with a scene containing a cube and pyramid and the snapping settings we see here. Now, let's continue. Snap to edge allows us to snap the moving object anywhere on an edge of the target object. And using the B key restricts us to edges on both the moving and target objects. Snap to face lets us select anywhere on a face of the target object. Using B restricts us to faces only on both objects. Snap to volume snaps the origin of the moving object anywhere within the volume of the target. Exactly where within the volume the moving object is placed depends on what part of the moving object we are snapping with and our viewpoint. In this example, we have selected the origin of the moving pyramid and moved it into the cube. Now, if we imagine a line drawn from our original viewpoint when we were moving the object through the cube going through the cube to an exit point, we can see that the pyramid's origin has been placed at the midpoint of the line. If we try the same approach with a torus, we might expect the pyramid's origin to end up in the hole at the center of the torus. But, as we can see that's not what happens. When Blender calculates where to place the pyramid it takes the coordinates of the imaginary line's entry point and its first exit point from the torus. This means that the far side of the torus is ignored in the calculation. However, in the snapping panel, a new option appears when we use Snap to Volume. This is labeled Snap Peel Object. With this selected, Blender uses the imaginary line's first entry point and last exit point when calculating the position for the moving object. And, in the case of the torus, that places the pyramid at the center of the torus when we use the previous example's viewpoint at the start of the move. Snap to edge center snaps to the center of any nearby edge on the target object. Snap to edge perpendicular snaps the moving object to the target's edge in such a way as to create a perpendicular line between the moving object's original position, signified by the displayed circle, and its new position on the edge. By holding down the shift key while clicking on snap to entries, we can select more than one option. This then affects which elements can be selected in the target object. When using the B key, we will be able to select any of the elements corresponding to the highlighted Snap to options. This is true for both the moving and target objects. The options given under the heading Snap Individual Elements 2 are mostly used when working in edit mode. And we'll be looking at snapping in edit mode in a later video. However, it is possible to use these two options in object mode, so let's see what they can do. Face Project snaps the moving objects onto the faces near the mouse pointer's location. We'll see the effect of this by dragging a set of small cubes onto a UV sphere with a limited number of faces. Face Nearest snaps the objects to the nearest face. This is performed automatically as soon as we hit the G button, but the final position of the moving objects is affected by the mouse pointer position. Unlike other snapping options, this option can snap to faces that are not visible from our current viewpoint. For both face project and face nearest, it's the moving object's origin that is snapped to the face. Align rotation to target, when checked, will rotate the moving object so that it aligns with the target area. This is of most use when we select a face on both the moving and target objects. In this example we'll use the B key option to select the base face on the pyramid and the side face of the cube. The pyramid automatically reorientates itself so that its base lies flat on the side of the cube. Blender achieves this by rotating the moving object so that its local z-axis aligns with the face normal of the target area. This align option is particularly useful when placing an object on a curved surface. In this simple example, we'll place the origin of a small cylinder on a large UV sphere. Backface culling, when selected, 
disable snapping to vertices, edges or faces that are part of a back face. This time our example contains a plane and a small cube. We can highlight front and back faces by going to the viewport overlays panel and switching on face orientation. This shows front faces in blue and back faces in red. All the back faces of the cube are on its inside so they are not visible. But if we look on the other side of the plane we can see its back face. Attempting to snap a vertex of the cube to one on the plane's front face works as we would expect. However, when we attempt the same operation on the back face, no snapping occurs. Of course, if we switch off this snapping option, then the restriction no longer applies and we can perform an attachment anywhere on the plane. Under the heading Target Selection, we have Exclude Non-Selectable. When we activate this option by pressing on the button, objects in our scene that have been set as non-selectable in the Outliner Editor, cannot be snapped to. If we deselect this option in the snapping panel, elements of cube 001 can be snapped too, just like any other object. A snapping option that doesn't appear in the options panel is the ability to select more than one snapping point on the target and moving objects. All we need to do is press the A key to select a snapping point and only use the left mouse button when selecting the final snapping point. Blender will then place the selected moving element in the middle of all the selected points. For example, let's try and place a flattened cube on top of a standard cube. The flattened cube is slightly smaller in width and depth than the standard cube, so we'd like to end up with an even border around the standard cube when the move is finished. This is the result we're looking for. The snapping options start with their default settings. With the object to be moved selected, we'll begin by pressing G to start the move and then press B. Now we'll select a vertex on the lowest face, and press the A key. Next we'll move to the diagonally opposite vertex, this time pressing the left mouse button. Blender will then calculate the midpoint of the two selected locations and that will be the snap width, location. As the moving object is dragged over to the target cube, we need to move the pointer over a top vertex and press the A key. Finally, we move to the opposite vertex and press the left mouse button. Again, Blender calculates the midpoint between the two selected points and this becomes the Snap 2 location. And, with the middle of both faces snapped together, we have the result we were after. Using the diagonally opposite vertices to calculate the midpoint of a face only works if that face is a perfect rectangle. For other situations we need to select all the vertices of a face in order to find its midpoint. For example, if we try to place our pyramid exactly in the middle of the cube's top face, we'll need to select all three vertices on the pyramid's base to find its midpoint. We can also make use of midpoints to place an object in the middle of the space between two or more objects. In this example, we can place a small sphere halfway between two cubes. This time we won't make use of the B key to select the points involved. Instead, we'll set snap width, to center and snap to, to vertex. To place the sphere at the center of the gap between the two cubes, we need to choose a vertex on the first cube by pressing the A key and then select the diagonally opposite vertex on the second cube. This time we press the left mouse button to complete the operation.